Let's Talk Supply Chain. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Talk Supply Chain. So let's kick things off with a question. Today's guest is a 2024 Woman in Supply Chain Award winner, but how many submissions did supply and demand chain executive, the brand behind the awards, receive this year? Well, both Let's Talk Supply Chain and Blended sponsor the Woman in Supply Chain Forum, and I know their submissions are growing for the awards every single year. But what do you think? Let me know your guesses over on social and keep listening because all will be revealed at the end of the show. So today I'm excited to welcome a bilingual customer success expert, logistics professional, and team builder to our Woman in Supply Chain series. She's been named a rising star in the industry, and that is Mercedes Pina. With over 10 years of diverse experience in the, the logistics and supply chain industry, Mercedes is committed to client satisfaction and fostering strong relationships. A passionate mentor, Mercedes is also dedicated to empowering others and fostering inclusive environments where diverse voices are heard and valued. So today, Mercedes will be talking all about her career journey, her experience as a young immigrant in America, her passion for logistics, and why she believes that with determination and a positive mindset, anything is possible. But of course, we cannot have this series without our show sponsors. So Food, Logistics, and Supply and Demand Chain Executives, Woman in Supply Chain Award, and Forum honors female supply chain leaders and executives whose accomplishments, mentorship, and examples set a foundation for women in all levels of a company's supply chain network. So go check it out, Woman in Supply Chain Awards, Woman in Supply Chain Forum. So welcome to the show, Mercedes. Thank you, Sarah. It's really a pleasure to be hosting here with you. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk and discuss through my journey that I've been through throughout the years. Yes, I can't wait. I'm so excited to have you here. I mean, Woman in Supply Chain Award season is in full swing. And I think we're going to be celebrating all the women from now until almost the end of 2025. And it's amazing. We're going to keep that momentum going. And, you know, I get the chance to interview some fascinating women across the industry, and I'm really happy to get to know you today and introduce you to our audience. So let's just dive right in. Now, your journey began as a young immigrant in Long Island. Talk to us about that. What was your experience? And uh, yeah, give us the details. Yeah. So my journey as an immigrant in Long Island started with the hope of a better educational future for my family. My parents were determined to provide us with opportunities they didn't have. Um, from a young age, they installed in me the importance of work and perseverance for um, to provide us the opportunities they didn't have and to continue to strive for better. At times, they worked two jobs um, wow. so we can have the achievements and, and proceed from there. Living in our environment made me really appreciate and the sacrifices my parents made gave me the opportunity to strive for excellence in everything that I do. Wow, I love that. And there's a lot of stories like this, not only in the U.S., but also in Canada, kind of across North America. I know my parents were also immigrants. Um, they were originally from the U.K., but they went to Iran. And my dad ran a logistics company in Iran for a few years before the fall of the Shah, and then they ended up coming to Canada. And um, he ended up becoming an entrepreneur. So lots of different paths, right? But we really get to watch and learn from them as to how they started in a new country, what that meant for them, um, and which paths they decided to take, right? Yeah, that's incredible. It's incredible the opportunities that we get to have out here and uh, to hear this story like that, becoming an entrepreneur, it's it's just incredible. Yeah, yeah. And neither path is easy, right? And, and yeah. none of this is easy. So what were some of the challenges you faced as a young immigrant in a new country? What was your approach to kind of tackling some of those challenges and how do you think those experiences have shaped who you have become today? Yeah, so some of the challenges that I faced were the adjustment to a new culture, um, the struggle of set settling into a new country. For example, learning a complete new language. Language. This experience brought my family closer and it shaped me who I am today. Um, the hard work and determination to strive for a better legacy and opportunities that my family didn't have before really, really pushed me to, to do better in the journey ahead for me. 
Mm -hmm. And where did, where did they come from originally, if you don't mind me asking? Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. And they ended up in um, starting out in Long Island. Are Long you currently Island. in New York? I'm in California now. You're in California. And what about the rest of the family? Are they kind of spread out? They've all done they, their own thing? They are. Um, awesome. So my sisters are in New York and Pennsylvania. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> I love to hear that, right? Because you start in one place and as your journey um, gets started and keeps going and your family branches out and discovers new opportunities, it's interesting to see where you started and then where everybody has sort of end up, ended up. So where did your career begin? I think you've said that from a young age, you were driven by a passion for logistics. I thought I was the only one, but apparently not. Um, but that was really the same for me because I grew up in a family of logistics entrepreneurs. So where did your passion for logistics come from? Yeah, so my career journey began when I moved to California at the age of 22. In Italy, I thought the logistics field was um, was going to be something tempor temporarily. However, uh -huh. um, while I dwelled deeper into the industry, I became uh, um, captivated by its vastness and complexity and the challenges of understanding the full scope of it. Um, no two days are alike in the in this industry. Um, when I was younger, I didn't really understand or really captivated how important it is, um, the background and everything that comes into the logistics aspect of how it affects the community and the economy overall. So every day that I got more into it, it really, really pushed me to learn about it and be more interested into the aspect of the entire project. And that really pushed me to really dive into and continue to grow in this uh, industry. I love that. It kind of sucks you and you can't really leave after that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good though. It keeps you on your toes every day. <laughs> It's kind of, um, it's almost an obsession, right? You get obsessed with sort of that problem solving and it, it not being the same thing day in and day out. And that's what sucks people in. And you just don't, <laughs> you don't ever leave like yes. logistics and supply chain, <laughs> or there's not a lot of people that you've heard throughout their journey that they've come into supply chain, they've left supply chain and then they haven't come back at some point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you're now Vice President of Client Services and Expedited Pricing at STG Logistics. Give us a taste of what that looks like. What does a day in the life of a client-focused VP look like? Yeah, so my day combines a strategic planning um, with direct client engagement. I start by reviewing performance matrix to ensure we meet service level agreements. And I connect with my team to tackle day-to-day -day and brainstorm innovation solutions. I also engage with key clients in collaborating with our operations and pricing team to ensure that we um, level several of customers with everything that they need. And I focus on nurturing um, relationships and understanding our clients' evolving needs for crucial long-term solutions. I also regularly check in with our sales team to proceed, provide feedback and refine our services and part participate in cross-department meetings to collaborate on aligning objectives. Um, this pushes us to provide the best service experience for our team and for our clients across the board. Mm. So it sounds like you really take a collaborative approach to your every day. Has that always been something that you have really focused on as an individual, like the collaboration? I mean, I have this sign behind me that says collaboration <laughs> is the future of business. It's kind of been in my nature my whole way through my journey. Um, has that been something that's sort of been forefront to you is that you want to be collaborative and you want to sort of win together with anybody that you're working with? Yes, 100%. I believe in, in a team that we're all working for that one goal. And if we collaborate, we'll be able to succeed, not just as one, but as a, in the entire company. So that, that has always something being in the background for me where I just really want to be able to support and collaborate with the industry, with our team members, with family, wherever I am, that makes an impact and a difference across the board. Yeah, I love that. That's such a great mindset. And I, I feel like more and more people are getting there, but still, for some reason, our industry is so siloed. <laughs> um, and it's a hard, it's, it's hard to break down those barriers in that traditional way of, of thinking about it, right? But I, I really feel like for that impact, like you said, the success of an individual, of a team, of an organization, collaboration is really the key to that. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that that's a focus for you. 
So um, give us your perspective on the increasing focus on client services, because, you know, it's just something that we've seen take center stage for companies. We're talking a little bit more about customer experience. They're dedicating more time, budget, resources to customer service, and then leveraging that as a competitive advantage, especially in logistics, in a way that I just haven't really seen before. I feel like I've been speaking about customer experience and logistics for a very long time. And now we're actually seeing people take advantage of that and use it um, to differentiate themselves in the industry. So talk to us a little bit about that. Absolutely. The rising focus on client service marks a pivotal shift in how business approach customer relationship. Exceptional service is now vital for retention and brand loyalty, which sets companies apart in the market. Investing in customer service really makes an impact for our customers and industry across the board, especially to create revenue and growth by utilizing technology and really maintaining our client-centric approach it makes an impact across the network. Mm hmm yeah, it absolutely does. So, and from what I understand, you specialize in pricing strategies. Now, that's a tough one because obviously all clients want things just a little bit cheaper. And in a climate where we have inflation, rising costs across the board, how do you find that balance? Like, how do you approach what is really essentially that tightrope walk? Yeah, so navigating pricing amongst inflation, it is challenging. For our strategic focus on transparency and value creation, we understand each of our clients' needs and leverage data analytics to identify saving cost opportunities and, and where we can um, provide additional processes without sacrificing our quality. It enables us to tailor pricing solutions to address clients' concerns and ensure profitability. And then also being open in, in the communication of the market and pricing condition and just building that trust for our clients really makes an impact and difference when it comes to a specific unique rate for our customers. Yeah, I can only imagine because to be honest with you, there's a lot of supply chain professionals, teams, leaders who are overwhelmed, right? They have a lot of things that they need to think about. New regulations, cutting costs, pricing, new technology, which technology to invest in, which not to, to invest in, you know, which is a priority, which process should we take and, and sort of automate so many things to think about. So really knowing that you have a partner and somebody who's really thinking about your business and your supply chain, your logistics, your teams, and not having to focus on that, but relying on somebody else to, to help do that. I'm sure that you, you work with a lot of clients that really um, just enjoy that part of the relationship with you. Like this industry is so much about relationships, right? It is 100%. Having trusted partners and enforcing, reinforcing those long-term relationships can go a long way. So now I want to find out, you know, you've been in the industry a while. Um, do you have any predictions or maybe some insights into the trends that we should be looking out for or maybe expecting in logistics for 2025? Certainly. In today's world, it's really hard to, to predict anything. However, um, come 2025, I anticipate ser several key trends with automation, with AI, with um, sustainability and environmental um, concern growth with packaging and green packaging solutions um, and alternatively fuel resources. Um, in addition, the boom on, on the e-commerce, I anticipate seeing um, a lot of that happen more where uh, sophisticated final mile solutions will be requ requested. Um, people want everything faster nowadays. So a lot of enhancement with data analytics and, and system in, um, innovations coming across the board. I really like to hear that. We need, we want some more people spending some money on products so that, <laughs> you know, we can uh, keep supply chains moving, keep our trucks moving and all of that. Now, I want to say congratulations because you received the Rising Star Award at this year's Woman in Supply Chain Awards. What does this award mean to you? This recognition symbolizes not just a personal achievement for me, but also a collective progress on women in the supply chain industry. As both a woman and an immigrant, I understand the unique challenges we face in a traditional male-nominated field. So this award reinforces the idea of diverse perspectives are invaluable and anybody makes me to advocate for inclusivity, for mentoring others who feel underrepresented. So I hope this recognition uh, inspires other women, especially those in diverse backgrounds, to 
pursue their career and continue to push through and then not let any barriers come in the way and really push through. So it's really a, an honor to get this recognition. Yeah, I love that because representation really does matter, right? And um, other folks seeing that you have received this award and you were able to be nominated and then considered and received the award just also paves the way for other women who are coming up behind you and are seeing you thrive and succeed in your journey and your passion for logistics as well. So part of what makes you a rising star is your passion for mentoring and empowering others. Now you're still young yourself, so you could argue that you're pretty young to be mentoring. However, I did a recent blended podcast episode on mentoring and reverse mentoring, and it really shone a light on the fact that we can all learn from everybody, no matter where you come from, your age, that kind of thing. And I think it's so important to bring more young women into the industry. Um, so is that the key to success? Like, are you helping to bridge the gap and help meet those younger women where they are? What, what, do, what do you talk to them about? What are some of their concerns about coming into the industry? I'm just, I'm so interested. Absolutely. I believe that mentoring is crucial, especially in industries like supply chain, where diversity and inclusion can significantly enhance innovation and problem solving. While I may be young, my experience as a young woman giving me a unique insight into the challenges we face um, entering this field. I strive in, into creating an environment where young women feel comfortable seeking guidance and sharing their perspective, um, bridging that gap, meeting them where they are and understanding their aspirations and providing reliable support, I can prioritize and share my background where I came from and, and open that sense of uh, fostering the community that makes, um, makes a traditional mentoring more dynamic and sharing my journey, encouraging open dialogue to help inspire confidence in the, and inspire young women who are pursuing it to enter this industry. So like what is top of mind for young women when they're considering coming into logistics and supply chain, or maybe they're already in the industry? Like what, what are some of their top concerns? Um, it may be speaking uh, their voice. They might not want to be heard. And just, I have seen that people stay quiet and just want to stay in the lane when in reality they can pursue and do more in their career. And it's just getting out of the safe zone and really taking risks to expand the capabilities that they can definitely um, come out and, and show who they truly are. Hmm. So that's the number one thing is that they have um, a hard time finding their voice. Yes, I, I've seen that a lot. Hmm. Have you had anybody who've con who's considered coming into logistics and supply chain approach you and just sort of ask you what it's like? Uh, yes. Um, and <laughs> a lot of uh, my friends do like trying to understand what the supply chain is or not in the industry and explaining what it is. It's, it's really uh, an exciting topic to for people who don't really understand it. Um, and I've seen uh, even family members reach out and try to understand what it is. And it just is really intriguing for, for people to understand what the supply chain is. That's awesome. I love that you're just talking to everybody about what it is to be in this industry and like the opportunities that there are, because there's so many opportunities and it's hard to be able to translate that. But I am so thankful that we have somebody like you who's doing that um, with all sorts of people, right? Young women, your family, your friends, um, and really like letting your passion shine. Like I can see how passionate you are about the industry. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. So I know you believe in having a positive mindset, a belief that anything is possible. So what's your advice to translating that mindset into action? What are your top tips for the women following in your footsteps? Certainly. My advice for translating positive mindset into action is to set clear, achievable goals and break them down into manageable steps. Surround yourself with positive people who inspire you and embrace challenges as a learning opportunity. Remember, persistence is key and stay focused. Believe in your ability to overcome obstacles and take risks. Don't, don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. And to remember, failure is just a stepping stone to success. And embrace to continue to learn in the supply chain field and stay curious and seek out knowledge. And don't hesitate to expand your skill set. And finally, pay it forward. As you grow, remember to mentor and support others. Sharing your experience and insight can have a profound impact on someone's health journey. 
So I have a question for you. How do you feel about that word failure? Because I uh, think that we should abolish it from from our vocabulary. I, I don't see it as failure. I see it just as a second chance to try and do it better. Um, it's just pursuing and pushing through. It's, it's just a stepping stone to what can I do differently to make it even better? Right? I think I think you're right. We need to change the word failure maybe with second chance. Yes. I love that. I love that. All right. So last question. You are a rising star. So what does the future hold for you? What are you excited about? So I envision myself to continue to grow personally and professionally, taking on leadership roles that allow me to influence a positive team in the organization and the industry. And I want to continue to push and mentoring others and fostering that inclusive environment so I can continue to drive innovation and contribution on projects that make a meaningful impact while also continuing to learn and adapting to new challenges that might, that might come my way. Mm, I love that. I actually have one more question to you. Okay. So I think about like we were talking about how you're a young woman in the industry, you're mentoring young women. What would you say to senior leaders or people who have been in the industry like me for 20, 25 years? Um, what would you say to us in making it more um, of a safe space, more of an open environment for young women to feel more comfortable to share their voice? Um, I say just keep an open mind. I know um, people may be starting in a new field who may be afraid to open up and, and share their voice. Just be patient, keep an open mind to understanding that we all were there at, at one point and just help those people understand their challenges that they may be facing and, and try to provide some guidance. And that will go a long way, especially in their next career or next step in their life. Yeah, thank you for that. Because a lot of times there's sort of a little bit of a disconnect and we don't want to forget that there's a lot of great young talent coming into this industry and remind leaders um, and other professionals in the industry of what their responsibility is to open up the doors and open up the response or the opportunities for the young talent to come into this industry so we can all make a difference together and let, just move this industry forward. I mean, we're all passionate about it. We all love it or we wouldn't be here, right? So how do we collaborate and come together to do that? Yeah, it's just keep pushing through and being there to support each other. It will go a long way, just helping each other for that one collaborating solution. Um, and there is no, no ego or anything pertaining to that, just pushing through and helping anyone who wants to join the field. Love that. Well, your journey from young immigrant to leadership level and award-winning rising star is so inspirational. I know there will be a lot of young women listening to this today who are going to go away feeling positive and motivated and ready to embrace all of the opportunities that supply chain has to offer. So did you all have a guess at today's big question? Well, at the top of the show, I asked you how many submissions did supply and demand chain executive receive for this year's Woman in Supply Chain Awards? Well, it was close to 350. And of those 350, 46 women were self-nominated. That is an increase from 39 in 2023. You go, girls, and only 12 in the previous year. That's right. We are starting to self-advocate, advocate for ourselves, and that is amazing to see because I love to see women celebrating their own achievements. Now, if you'd like to hear more from us at Let's Talk Supply Chain, we have more content for you. Head over to letstalksupplychain.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel. And Mercedes, it's been a pleasure to get to know you and your journey, and I appreciate you. I want to acknowledge and appreciate you for coming on and sharing so vulnerable, vulnerably with us today. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. So 